Yeah, welcome to another episode on yet another electronics channel. Today I want to say a big thanks to you that I managed like a couple of months ago to reach like 1000 uh, subscribers on my YouTube channel. Um, to be honest, I never expected that I would reach uh, so much um, at any time. However, uh, as a thanks to you, I want to present you a project I was working a couple of years ago. Um, and yeah, so basically it was a full FPGA controlled um, audio amplifier for a 2.1 audio system. So you can see it here, we have an analog audio source, it's going to some FPGA controlled amplifier and then we have like two speakers, left speakers, right speakers, some very small ones and a big subwoofer. But now let's have a look like uh, how the overall system is working. So you see here, we have basically two boards. You will see it in the end if I will uh, present it to you. And we have here our audio ADC, and this is uh, doing the, or feeding the audio stream into our FPGA. And then our FPGA is doing some integrated DSP stuff and modulating the PWMs and the PWMs here, the both for the uh, small speakers are going out to the double H bridge TAS 5601 from Texas Instruments. So this is really just a dumb H bridge for um, audio applications. And then we have once again two LC filters and two speakers. And then on the other one hand side, we are generating a PWM, but only of uh, 12 kilohertz um, in this case, which is going to be transmitted into a CAN transceiver, which is transmitting the audio signal over a CAN bus. And then on the second board, we are receiving this audio signal by the CAN transceiver, feeding in into a mic controller. And then we have uh, two half bridges, which is IFX 070, uh, powered at 36 volts. And then we have here our subwoofer connected with an integrated um, LC filter. And for, uh, yeah, we also have a small UI control for uh, the user standing in front of it. And therefore we have a small uh, 2.4 inch LCD display with an ILI 9341 uh, LCD and a rotary controller and a small microcontroller. But now let's have a further look what exactly on the FPGA is going on. So here we are having our um, we have external ADC, the Cirrus Logic device. We have an I2S uh, receiver and also the FPGA is generating like master clock, bit clock, word clock and so on. And then we have an internal DSP core because we have to separate somehow the frequency ranges between the subwoofer and the small satellite speakers. So we are having like two IIR uh, high pass fillers here at 120 hertz. And we have a double um, IIR low pass filler at 110 hertz. Uh, which is getting the um, summed up mono signal from the stereo input here. And then we are doing some gain control. All the stuff is controllable via an integrated UART port, which is connected um, via or to the microcontroller. And then we are doing basically the same stuff as I have shown you already here in one of my previous video about FPGA based class D amplifier. We are doing the upsampling by eight, um, then the noise shaper circuitry, and then the PWM. Uh, control in here. But for the subwoofer, basically, we are only having that 12 kilohertz PWM frequency. So we only are doing a downsampling of four here um, in the end. And this is going fed also directly into PWM. But now let's have a look to the um, real uh, circuitry. So this is now the overall board. Here you can see my small speakers. And here on the bottom is the big subwoofer. So, but now let's have a first look. So we have basically two switching mode power supplies. This is one for 15 volts output. This 15 volt power supply is powering this yeah, main controller board. Here's some DC-DC converter, which is generating the five volts, feeding the five volts by USB to this um, RTX FPGA board. And then we have another 36 volts power supply, but this is only for our subwoofer board here. So you can see here at the front, there is the mini input jack, which is connected here to my uh, smartphone. And then we have here our small ADC circuitry, uh, feeding the audio via i squares into the FPGA. And then we have here the TAS5601, that double edge bridge here with the LC filters. And those cables are going to some XLR jacks here on the bottom side, where you can see those jacks are connecting to the small speakers. And then 
we have here also our Kendron Cipher. So this is basically a mix out of power supply and Kendron Cipher, feeding the 12 kilohertz PWM signal of the FPGA into the canvas. This is this cable going here through the switch where I can yeah, turn on and off the canvas. And then we are receiving here on this side, the can signal, here's the power supply. And here we have our IFX 007T um, half bridges, but we need like a full bridge for the subwoofer. So we have two of them. Here's some buffering caps. Here's our uh, can receiver. And yeah, that power signal goes here to speak on check. And here I have my subwoofer. This is some LD system sub 88, I think. And yeah, this is also modified with a speak on check here uh, at the back side. So I would say now let's turn it on. So the system is now up and running. You can see this also here over the indicator lights on the FPGA board or here on the power supply. And you can see here also on the LCD display that it's ready now. And I would say I play now some music. And now I have the rotary encoder and I can turn up the volume here. So you can see here on the left side are already the levels. So most of the power was now to the subwoofer. I can also put the subwoofer level now a little bit higher or lower here via the rotary encoder. Let's put it to plus, yeah, 12 dB somehow. And now I turn up the volume. And I can also skip now the can bus. And you can hear now the subwoofer is not working anymore. Now we're watching once again the backside of the subwoofer and you can see I have here that custom speak on port and yeah the biggest problem was that I had only 12 kilohertz on switching frequency which is basically still sufficient for like under 100 hertz a baseband signal but we need a relatively big LC filter circuitry and therefore I open the speaker now so you can see I have disconnected the normal speaker ports and I integrate the relatively huge um, LC filler here at this point and then the cables are going here to the two speaker drivers so this is kind of I don't know push-pull architecture or so I'm, I'm not so familiar with uh, loudspeakers basically 